Well, hello everyone. Happy Wine and Wealth Wednesday. I am not live tonight. In fact, I'm recording this because my girlfriend is turning 50 and I am celebrating with her right now in a restaurant in Minneapolis as a surprise. However, you know, instead of Wine and Wealth Wednesday, <laughs> look at this. I'm having a green juice Wednesday because it is Wednesday morning. So anyway, I want to welcome you all to this session tonight, which we are talking about quality spending. And this is an emotional topic. And I know you're going to find a ton of value from this because we all, every single one of us can relate. So before I start, I just want to reintroduce myself. For those of you that are new in our group, my name is Dawn Dalby and I'm the CEO of a multi seven figure wealth advisory firm. I've been giving advice for over two decades on teaching people how to live wealthy. So what is living wealthy? It's really about standing in your worth as a human being, like who you are. It's standing in your worth as well as building your wealth. And you do that by learning a couple of things. You learn how to have freedom in your life and security at the same time. So I, that's what I'm teaching. I'm teaching you how to live wealthy. I am a certified financial advisor and a behavioral financial advisor. So I mix in, as you listen to me, you're going to see I'm, I'm mixing in the technical wealth building advice that you need. That's the certified financial planner in me. And I also mix in the psychology, which is, you know, the behavioral financial advisor in me. And here's the thing. They both need to intersect and come together if you really want to live wealthy and build real wealth. So I teach both the psychological and the technical stuff. And tonight we're talking about quality spending. And here's the thing. Everyone's curious about how people spend their money. However, nobody ever wants to discuss it. It's such a private kind of taboo subject to talk about spending your money. Okay. Because we, as human beings, we judge others for their spending or their lack of spending. We compare ourselves to others on how we spend our money. We, all of us typically have a guilty relationship when it comes to how we spend our money. And some of us feel like we're better than others if we have more money. And some of us perceive that others are better than us if they have more money. Okay. These are all false limiting beliefs, but it's, it's the behavioral side, the psychological side that we need to talk about with spending because guess what? Spending gets us in trouble all the time. Okay. It's our spending. It's our spending on whether we're overspending or we're underspending. Okay. The goal is to be aligned, have a, an alignment with your spending. However, most people don't have alignment with their spending. We're going to talk about tonight how you can get alignment with your spending, but we are, I find out that most people are overspending or they're underspending. So let's just spend a few moments on why, why do people overspend or underspend? And let me ask you this, because this is a private group. I'm not going to ask you to comment tonight because I'm pre-recorded, but here's the thing. Why do people, or why do you over or underspend? I've seen both many times and I can tell you if you're one that overspends, it's the same why as if you're one that underspends. And it is, it comes down to this. It comes down to a worth issue in a, an emotional trigger around what you believe and think about your own worth as a human being. So if you didn't have a chance to, to go listen to my live from last Wednesday, it was on emotions and fear. And I got pumped up in that video. Let me tell you, I was saying the Effenheimer. We were preach. I was preaching spirituality. I was all over the board because I can so relate to fear and emotions. Okay. I'm a female that has a lot of excitement and energy in me and I can relate to emotions and fear. And that is what gets in the way of our spending over or under spending and the worth connection that we have. Okay. So we need to figure out, we need to figure out this worth connection and what is it? Why, what is our worth connection? or our worth issue, I should say, not really the connection, the connection between your worth and the wealth and the worth issue. You know, is it, is the worth issue, um, around you feeling like you're enough with yourself. And sometimes people don't feel like they're enough as they 
are as a human being. So they kind of overcompensate and spend and buy things above their financial means because it makes them feel worthy. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes people underspend because again, they don't feel worthy enough because the, when I say they're not worthy enough, it's because they're living in emotional fear. They're living in fear that there's not going to be enough. And they haven't done that personal development, rehashing how they're thinking, rehashing how to manage their emotions and how to control your thinking and knowing from a rational perspective of your brain that yes, there is enough and there is enough to take care of you. But sometimes people don't believe that because of their limiting thinking. So they underspend and all they do is save their money. Okay. So are you an over saver or an overspender or are you an underspender or an under saver? Okay. Let's go back to the, to the, the root issue of this and really determining if you have a spending issue over or under it's due to typically a self-esteem worth issue. I'll tell you this too, is that I want you to get clear. Do you, I want you to get clear on your spending. So do you really, is it really a spending issue or is it an income issue? Cause some of you might not have a spending issue. You're like, you know what, Dawn, I feel like my spending is in a line in alignment and I have a spending plan. By the way, I hate the word budget, hate it. Um, because it, it limits us, it deprives us and we don't want that. You have a spending plan. Okay. Some of you might have a spending plan. You're like, I feel really good on my spending plan and I don't have this emotional trigger that you're talking about. Well, guess what? Then you might have an income issue. You might not have a spending issue. You might have an income issue and you're not making enough income. And if you're not making enough income, I'm going to tell you, it typically goes back to the worth issue because you don't have enough worth in, in your abilities and believing in your skills and your talents to go get paid for what you're worth. Okay. Is it an income issue or is it a spending issue? So, Here's the thing. Like I said, we need, I need you to have an aligned spending plan. Okay. And it's not, it's more than a, just a spending plan. It's actually an aligned financial plan, if you will. So here's the thing. If you have, um, I'm going to show you, a, a PowerPoint in a second, but if you follow the rules that I have around a financial plan, which is really your spending plan, right? But it's a little bit bigger than spending because it's a saving and spending plan. So we call it a financial plan. If you follow this alignment, you are going to, you're going to actually stop feeling guilty about your spending. You're going to be able to achieve this spending freedom that I so preach about day in and day out. If you follow the alignment plan, you're going to also stop comparing yourself to your neighbors, what house they live in, what cars they drive, what clothes they wear, what dinners, what, what they pay on their food, etc. You're going to stop the comparison. You know what else you're going to do? You're going to stop feeling the comparison will stop you feeling envy and jealous. You're going to stop all that emotional baggage that we all have around money. In fact, when you get aligned, you're actually going to get this. When you're aligned, you're actually going to feel Okay. When someone else spends money on that expensive person, you don't want to, or you spend money on the person. You don't feel guilty about it. Or that other person is driving a nicer car than you. If you're aligned, it doesn't matter because you're going to spend your money on the things that matter most to you. And you're going to stop wasting your money on the things that provide you no value. That's true spending freedom. In fact, you know, I want you to get into this spending freedom. I also want to, to share with you how to create this financial security so you can live tomorrow too. I want you to live full today. That's my whole passion is having you live full today and full tomorrow. And you need the combination in order to do that is worth and wealth. Worth is what you think about yourself. It's how you react to your emotions. It's how you spend your time. In fact, let me tell you a little story. I know someone in my life and I'm not going to point fingers that, um, said to me, this was a year ago that, you know, what was being super, super kind to me and said, you know what? I'll just come pick you up at the airport. And I'm like, it's late. Okay. It's really late. It's fine. I will take an Uber. It's 
$30. Okay. It's $30 versus you coming out to get me at, at the airport. To, at the airport. And here's the thing, this person coming to get me at the airport round trip would have been over an hour and a half. And this person's like, Don, I don't get you. Like, why would you, why do you, why would you get an Uber? And I'm like, it's $30. This person would rather waste, in my opinion, spend or waste, however you want to look at it, their time, their worth, their time, which is their worth an hour and a half and spending their gas and driving around over an hour and a half. So I, who can more than afford $30 to, to get myself home. And this wasn't a safety issue. Okay. This was clearly, why would you spend $30 on that? That was this person's response to me. And you know what my response is? Why would you waste an hour and a half of your life driving around when you can have quality time reading your book, sleeping, doing whatever you find more valuable than driving your car. Okay. Worth and wealth. We all think a little bit differently about worth and wealth, but I'm going to tell you something. What's your priority? Us as human beings put so much emphasis on the value of money that we don't we degrade our worth and our time as human beings. Okay. And I'll tell you something. If you are earning enough money and you listen to my advice and you're saving the right type of money that are, that's wasted, that you don't even work, that I'm turning wasted money into savings. Okay. But if you follow this advice that I'm giving you, then guess what? You're going to start valuing you, your time and your worth more than your wealth because you're going to have enough wealth to be able to value, value yourself more. Do you hear what I'm saying? You're going to have enough wealth to value you, which is more important than money. You're going to value, value yourself more. And that's what I want for every single person, this alignment. Okay. So let's talk about this. Let me show you, um, this little PowerPoint that I have. Hello. Like here. Okay. So here I am in my little bubble looking at you with the aligned financial plan. So it's about having the right balance, which you see here. It's the balance between your goals and your spending. Your goals are really your saving plan. Okay. But I don't want, you know, if, if I just preach you save, 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 people go, uh, 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 I, I can't afford it. Right. But what are you saving for? You're saving for your goals, the things that are important to you. Okay. That's part of the alignment plan. The other part of the alignment plan is your spending and you're spending on all your other stuff. Okay. So let's go to the eggplant color and look at your goals. Important. What are the things that are important to you? It should be, you should be able to have enough wealth built up to take care of your power cash reserves. This is your, your money, your cash that just stays in cash and not is not invested. And it gives you power to put you in a position of control and make good choices about if you're ever in a position or situation that doesn't serve you right. Okay. You need power cash reserves. Then you also want to like have your person. What are your personal goals to remodel your house, to buy a second car, to maybe take vacations, to maybe just like sit on the couch and chill out and not have to worry about working a full-time job. Like that might be your goal. It doesn't matter what, but it doesn't matter specifically what the goal is, but what is your personal goal? What are your personal goals and making sure that you're committing to them. And then of course your retirement goals, like, like your retirement goals. So when work does become, you know, when, when work becomes non-negotiable, Okay. That's you. You got to take your freed up money. Your, your, let me take a step back. You got to take your wasted money and free that up and apply it towards your goals. The other part of the spending plan is on everything else. What is everything else? The other, the everything else comes down to two categories. It's your core values and your household expenses. Okay. Your core values. Again, if you have not done the core value exercise and you are not living and breathing your top five core values, not just knowing you got, listen, listen here, let me, let me preach. Let me preach. It's not just knowing your core values. Literally it's living your core values every single day of your life. I have my core values sitting on my desk, specifically my top five core values and making sure that I'm spending my time 
and my resources, my financial resources, my time, which is my worth. My, my financial resources is my wealth. I'm spending both of those in alignment with my core values. So you go back to the core values. Here's what I, I truly believe. Tonight we're talking quality spending, right? Your quality spend is around these core values. The five values that mean the most to you that you would not want to do life without, you spend 25% of your real net income on your core values. 25% of your real net income. I'm gonna explain what real net income is in a minute. The other stuff is your household expenses, like all the stuff that it takes to live, just to eat, do your hair, drive around, you know, pay for your kids. If you have kids, to do all the other stuff, okay? That's your household expenses. I believe, excuse me, I believe you should have, you should minimally spend, not quality spend here, but you should be minimizing your spending around your household expenses. And you should spend 35% of your real net income. I'm gonna teach you what real net income is in a minute, but 35% of your real net income. So some of you are like, Don, I don't get it. You just told me core values are the most important thing in my life and I should be spending 25% of my money there. But now you're saying all the other crap, household expenses, I should be spending more, which is 35%. Yes, because unfortunately the other stuff the household expenses actually cost us more just to live and breathe, okay? So 35% on household expenses. If you're spending 25% of your real net income on your core values, you're living a life guilt-free, comparison-free. You're living without envy, without jealous. You're living with freedom and security. So let's talk about this real net income, okay? And then I'm gonna wrap up. So real net income is this. It's, if you look at, if you go to Google right now and, and look up what the word net income means, net income equals after you pay your taxes. Okay, that's it. Net income is after you pay your taxes, then you get your money and then you live. What I am preaching, okay, what real net income is, is after not just the non-negotiable of paying your taxes, it's the non-negotiable of saving for your future as well. That's what real net income is. Real net income is after taxes and, yes, you said it, maybe, I hope. Did you say it? Savings. Net, real net income is after you've committed to the two non-negotiables in life. It's after you pay your tax bill and after you save, okay? After those two things are taken away. And saving, ideally 15%, if you can save anything, whether it's 5%, 10% of your gross income, whatever. But after you've calculated that number out, your real net income is after the two non-negotiables. You want freedom, you want security, Real, you gotta live by the real net income. It's after taxes, and saving, real net income, 25% to core values, 35% to household income. If you haven't done the core value exercise, go to my website, dawndalby.com. Dawn, D-A-W-N, Dalby, D-A-H-L-B-Y.com. Go to the menu bar at the top where it says wealth style. You click on that, you take the core values exercise. It's free, it's fun, it's pretty, it's motivating, it's life-changing, not when you take the exercise. It's life-changing when you live by these values, okay? So to wrap up, I want you to spend your money, I want you to spend the right dollars on the right things because that's gonna give you freedom. The right dollars, the quality spending on the right things, the things that matter most to you, the quality spending will give you freedom and it'll change all that negative energy, that negative emotion and turn it into an elevated life. I'm a living, breathing example of this and you can have exactly what I have if you align your spending.